So thanks everyone uh, for staying like late, <laughs> uh, but you won't be disappointed. I have a little surprise at the end of the talk. So um, for people who are listening to this talk on YouTube, please mute all your devices because I'm gonna speak with this little guy here. So I don't wanna have trouble with your devices on your home. Uh, before um, I have this little video actually that Chris shared with me an hour ago. I don't know if there is sound. Okay, there is special cable for sound. Where is it? Which one? Oh, okay, that's perfect. Let's play it again. Open the pod bay doors, please help. Sorry, I can't find anyone named Rod K. More in your contacts. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Sorry, I'm having trouble processing your request. What's the problem? Problem Child is a 1990 comedy movie starring Michael Oliver. What are you talking about, Hal? Huh? Playing Talking Heads on Spotify. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. Here are a few popular halal restaurants. Big L's Pizzeria, Fatima's Halal Meat Market and Grill, Cedar's Halal Meat Market and Grill, and all Wai'ai Restaurants. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Searching for flights to Idaho. <laughs> Hal, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Playing the doors on Spotify. <laughs> Okay, so um, like I don't want to like bash or troll on any technology, but just to show you, like folks, that the AI is not gonna take our jobs anytime soon. So don't worry. So this talk is all about like how to build a chatbot uh, or how they are like they they work internally. And uh, hopefully you could, like, at, by, at the, by the end of the talk, you will be able to build a voice application and in, get it integrated into your, um, let's say, a web app or Angular app. Um, just before we go ahead, uh, we continue. I have a, like, a simple game to play with you guys. So could you just, like, stand up, please? Um, I have my friend Guillaume, uh, who works uh, at Google in Paris. He made this little demo. Um, or basically, we are going to do some sport. Okay, are you, are, are you okay? Okay, let's try. This would be the first demo, actually. Hey, Google, let's do some sports. All right, getting the test version of Squat Master. Okay, let's do some squats. For how many seconds? 10 seconds. I lose with you. Ready for 10 seconds of squats? Go. Uh, come on. Go. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll let you do it. <laughs> Just kidding. 10. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. So now you are awake and ready. And me too, actually. Okay, so my name is Wasim. I work for a French company uh, in Paris. I'm a developer advocate engineer there. Uh, so that's my day job. And the rest of the time, I, uh, I'm a Google developer expert for both the Angular core team, but also the actions on Google team, or the assistant team at Google. I'm also a former member of the Angular Universal um, project, and also um, participating in the working group efforts well, where we want to make ESM modules work both in Node.js and also browser. And I also co-author a couple of open source projects on GitHub. Um, <clears throat> if you want to chat like in real life, like I think it's too late to chat in real life because all you guys are going back. But there is hopefully a panel question after the talk, so feel free to ask like me or any speaker actually any question you'd like. Um, or you can just ping me on Twitter. My DMs are always open, so you don't need to follow me to talk to me on Twitter. Just send me DMs at my Nico. All right, so uh, I just want to like 
explain the context because I, b before I, sp I talk about uh, like the, 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 the topic. Um, a year ago, a year and a half ago, when we were at the GDE Summit, we, like Google offered us these devices, like the Google Home devices. And this is, by the way, this is Mike from the Angular CLI team. So he got all of our devices for the picture. <laughs> Um, so since, since then, when I got back home, I tried like I decided to like start hacking with the device and understand how it works, like open it and check the internals. And then like since then, like I've been doing both, like both Angular and also chatbots and voice uh, applications, like personally, but even at work. All right, so um, I guess you folks are all I mean all know IRC or have used IRC. Who knows IRC? Who use it today? <laughs> so that was the old generation of chatbots, actually, where you could like, program bots uh, with hard-coded phrases, hard-coded requests. And you could, for instance, say, like, slash kick someone <laughs> uh, from, from, the, um, from the channel. But like, today, we have a new set of tools that will allow us to build, like, Real chatbots that can understand like our language naturally, with like really like easily. So this is a, a dialogue flow. We'll talk about the tool later on. But like literally today, like anyone, any developer can use such tools to build like in ten minutes something like a prototype or something get something working without any loaded knowledge of uh, like machine learning or natural language processing, for instance. So speaking about machine learning, um, <clears throat> for, for, for the couple, uh, like last years, we like we noticed a huge improvement in the AI world. And this is thanks to the advanced, um, the, the improvements in the machine learning world uh, using, for instance, here is the example from uh, Google's NLP, Natural Language processing API where we could, for instance, give it a phrase, a sentence, and it's able to tell you, like, um, like draw the dependency of words and also um, uh, gives you, like, tells you well, what's, what's a noun, what's a verb, what's an adjective. And there are more, more, more features to this. And also when you are talking with devices like these, like s connected speakers uh, or smart speakers as we refer to them, you're using your voice. So uh, with all these improvements, we're also now able to have devices that can understand, what, like, understand our language using techniques such as uh, ASR, for instance, and then convert that speech to text and from that on, sends back to a, uh, like the right engine to extract information and the context. So what I try to say uh, with the two, two, uh, the two slides is there is a lot of things happening under the hood, but for we as developers, we don't need to, I mean, we could, I mean, no, we could um, go deeper in each, each category, in each domain, but um, like everything is ready for us and we just, can't use it easily. So if you are curious, and like if you are like starting in this new chatbot um, world, I've wrote like a small uh, article on Medium with the like every vocabulary you need to know when you're starting, like what NLP means, what's, what's an agent, what's an assistant, and all that stuff. So please check it out. <coughs> So just to show you like the big picture, what's happening under the hood when like you write or you code a chatbot using the tools that I'm going to show you. So under like under the hood at the bottom, you have your 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 data, your your servers, or for instance, use the GCP, the Google Cloud Platform, or Azure function to deploy your logic of your bots. And then you would use devices like these, for instance, the Google Home, to interact with your application, which is, I mean, the bot is just an application. You could also use like devices like a phone, because these devices are only like big speakers with microphone, but all the intelligence that's happening under the hood, it's on the cloud, basically. 
So you could also use like the app on your phone, on your TV, and like in the future probably on your car or, or let's say on fridge maybe, who knows. And then you could, like when you interact with these, uh, these devices, you, um, you are basically talking to the actions on Google runtime. Um, <clears throat> So from this, from this, from this, this, inter uh, this in, in interaction here, the runtime then uses any NLP tool, for instance, Dialogflow here, to try to figure out what you are saying and match this request with a specific intent. And after that, like this part, you are going like you as a developer. That's what you will be coding actually. And then for a specific intent, you will trigger the specific action. We will have like code sample after all, so don't be afraid. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, so before we will, before we talk about the coding part, let's um, let's talk about like what's in conversation, what's what's a dialogue, and um, I mean in any conversation like this, probably <laughs> there is always people talking, like two minimum people. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be weird. And there is some, some sort of context happening here. So obviously here we don't know what's happening, but there is something ongoing. So they're talking, they are talking about something. Um, so that's, that's an obvious conversation. And then translating, translating this into um, our vocabulary, uh, I am Groot, for instance, would be the intent. So my intent is I am like introducing myself. And Groot he, here would be the entity, so your name, for instance. And on the other side, we have Hodor, which, which probably means, hi, I am Hodor, <laughs> which is another intent. So you could have intent without any entity, for instance. And under the hood, you have this thing we call context, because that's what, like, you are talking about something, about a topic, a subject. So we, as a developer, when we want to build a chatbot, let's say like for production use, not for fun, we have to go through these three steps, like designing a bot, building it, and then distributing it or publishing it. I mean, the design phase is like we do in our day job, like in software engineering, we all have to do designs, right? Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, not so. <laughs> um, that's basically the boring part, so I'm gonna, I'm, I will try to go like really fast on it. So uh, the first thing, I mean, the most impor important thing to do actually when, you, when you're creating a chatbot app or an assistant, that means the same word actually, you need to give your application a persona, like a personality actually. Uh, what I mean by this is if you're like a, comp a corporation or a brand, so you need to find the right personality for your application, probably by giving it, uh, who, who knows, like a name, an age, a, like description, um, a job, like really a persona, like what we do in design sprints. Um, you're gonna also like choose the right voice and right language. For instance, if you are like addressing like um, adults or like childs, you will not use the same language. Uh, should it be like formal or informal? So that's 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 the thing um, that you will need to write down before starting coding your app, actually. And then, when you're ready, like when you're ready to, like if you have a set of dialogues in mind and we're ready to design them, you will use tools to help you uh, achieve this task. And I'm going to present the, the dialogue flow. Because this is the tool we use to create conversational experiences. So this is an online tool, obviously. Um, you create your agent. So an agent is a project, is an assistant. That means the same thing, actually. And then you give it some intents. So here, I, the, the sample I'm showing here is the Angular bot. For instance, I have the, uh, like the Angular check version. So what's the current version of Angular? Um, OK, let me try a try live demo. Hey, Google, talk to Angular buddy. My apologies. I don't understand. It's my accent, actually. Hey, Google, talk to Angular buddy. Sorry, okay. I don't understand. Never mind. Um, 
and then we, you provided with those intents and with each intent you could provide entities. Uh, so entities could be, actually it could be anything. It could be like color, time, address, names, uh, like air flight numbers, whatever you decide. So all these basic entities are built in into this tool so you don't have to write machine learning models to recognize them. But if you want to, like, for instance, you are building a chatbot for your business and you have, let's say, um, like some product categories or something specific to your business, you can also like, provide them to the tool. We'll have a demo at the end, probably. So what I like the most about this dialog flow actually is it uses advanced machine learning under the hood, but we don't care about it as a developer. Just provide it with a sentence, and this is what, sh what the response should be. And the tool figure out what sentence the user pronounced and which intent does it match, extraction, the context, is, and the entities. And if you think like some intents didn't get recognized correctly, you could, you could still like go to the UI and train your bot. So correct, fix it, like you can fix, literally fix um, what user says with what should be matched. And of course, uh, another thing like that's mostly interesting for businesses is where you can build the same agent and you can distribute it on many platforms, really many platforms. Like, of course, the first platform would be the Google Assistant, but you, then you have um, Alexa, you have um, uh, Facebook, you have Slack, but you have Cisco, really lots of platforms. And also, it's available in many languages if you, are, if you care about internationalization. And if you happen to build like a mobile app, you get like um, SDKs for Unity, for C++, for iOS and Android as well. Um, yeah, that was um, actually I said. So now the fun part uh, for we as developers. <coughs> so let's see what happens when I speak with a device and it tells me, sorry, I didn't understand your language. Um, so, for instance, when you say, okay, plus the hot word, uh, I need to talk to this program, to this bot, um, actually, I'm just using the microphone of this device to talk with the Google Assistant runtime, which is basically uh, on the cloud. And then there, where all the magic happens, like with the like, speech-to-text recognitions, and then the text get passed to um, dialogue flow here where uh, it tries to match your phrase, what you're saying, or your text converted from the speech to the list of intents it has. And then when intent matches up, uh, you, would get the, you would get the, like, let's say, the hello message from the bot, and then you are talking with your application. application. You're not talking with like, the Google Actions anymore. So from, from here on, you can like start asking questions, so okay, tell me like whatever business I'm, I'm planning to do. Now, when like you have your dialogue ready, I mean, you have your design ready, then your dialogue ready, and then you're starting like to implement stuff, like implement the logic of your bot. So you would obviously do this in like, um, like if you are using cloud providers, the most efficient way to do uh, to use is the cloud function, a serverless architecture, where you will just code like implement a small amount, like a small function uh, that will be uh, triggered by the dialog flow uh, runtime whenever it matches any intent. Uh, really, a couple of words about um, serverless architectures. This is a um, fully managed, service-oriented, uh, and event-oriented, sorry, um, code that you host on some providers, for instance, here, Google or, or Microsoft. And then, uh, like, the, the most important part for me as a developer is you just pay what you consume, what you use. You're not, like, you're not spinning a VM and, like, paying 24 hours for, for VM. You're just, if your functions like um, start startup and like executes executes for one second. You're just paying one second. That's a sample of a like a really simple function. 
which returns like hi in Finnish. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not gonna pronounce it actually. <laughs> Cause I, I've been practiced for like, like last week, but I, just, I forget how to pronounce it. Um, so and then like you deploy this really complicated function to the cloud and with the right trigger, the cloud provider, the, like here, the GCP will give you a URL that you will use as the webhook for your chatbot. So here, a more like more complete function. So that's a um, that's a bot that counts the number of speakers here at NG Vikings. So basically, the whole application is in one file. By the way, don't do this in production. Don't put all your application in a flat file. Use like folders and files. Um, but basically, with this simple like 15 code, 15 lines of code, uh, I'm able like to ask like to like build a bot, ask it like okay. Give me how many speakers are there at NG Vikings. Do you want me to try live demo again? <laughs> hey Google, ask Sherry the Viking how many speakers are there? Sure, here's the test version of Sherry from the Angular Vikings. I found 50 speakers. Bam, that's it. So like in 10 minutes, five minutes, maybe if you are used with the tools, you are able to, um, if you know JavaScript, I guess all, everyone knows JavaScript, you are able to, uh, like this is your hello world, basically, application. And by the way, that was a fake Sherry, not the real Sherry. <laughs> Sherry is <right> there. <laughs> so what's, what's funny with cloud functions, like uh, as I said, you could like write, write this JavaScript function and deploy it on the cloud provider, and then you could choose how do you want to trigger that function. Um, so for us, like chatbot developers, I like that term, um, we only care about HTTP triggers, HTTP calls. But you can do more than that, actually. You can trigger a function using a PubSub event, or, for instance, if you like drop a file onto like, cloud storage, that will run a, a cloud function to do like, some stuff. If you are using Firebase, and I really, really recommend Firebase for these kind of applications, you get extra more trigger events. For instance, you can trigger your function um, if, you're, if you're, like, a particular node on your database has changed. Um, or, for instance, if someone like if you're using the Firebase authentication, you can trigger a function to, for instance, like say, like um, send an email or something like that. So yeah, that's basically a couple of examples here. I'm <coughs> creating a thumbnail from an image, like upload it from my phone. So I'll trigger a cloud function, convert to, to, to thumbnails, and then store back to the database. <coughs> but you could do really, really powerful stuff with these uh, functions or serverless applications or architectures. If you're interested in this topic, I've wrote, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I've wrote a 16-minute um, <laughs> blog post um, about like how to write a through serverless application where I cover everything, really everything, like every single line of code. And this is like the whole architecture of the app, which basically uses like a chatbot, you, I mean, not on the device, but on your computer, because it uses your camera to scan like a picture, then extract the text and send it to you back via SMS. We are engineers, so we don't care. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so that that was like a small um, speech about serverless architecture and cloud functions. Uh, of course, now while you are developing, you are you don't want to like spend. 30 seconds per deploy, because each time you want make to a, make a change, you don't want to deploy to the cloud every time. Um, so what we usually do is take that cloud function and like deploy it locally. So it's not cloud anymore, but it's, <laughs> it's a function. So for that, you will use a cloud emulator on your machine that like emulate the cloud environment. Um, which is funny because if you deploy your cloud function locally, so it's deployed on local host, so how can Dialogflow communicate with your local host? It's not possible. So for this, we use like any inter like tunnel um, services with, like for instance, ngrok, or as I like to call it, ngrok. 
which will thank you, which will create a, a the secured HTTP tunnel to over the internet directly to your machine for a specific port, and then you would use that address uh, onto your um, Dialogflow webhook settings. So yeah, faster feedback loop, and if you're using the um, Cloud Function emulator, actually it's it's doing hot reload, uh, like hot reloading for your Cloud Function. Just change, save, it automatically re re redeploys. You don't need Webpack for that, trust me. So here are a couple of command lines. For instance, if you're using Firebase to deploy locally, so Firebase ser uh, serve only functions. Or here, that's the emulator, actually, if you want to deploy, if you're using, for instance, like GCP um, environment, not the Firebase one. And then you run the ngrock um, command tool. That's the default port for Cloud Functions locally. And then you would have like a random URL that you would use um, on, on Dialogflow. So if you're like me, because I've been using this tool for, for a year, and each time I'm tired of like guessing the random URL that will generate it, you can buy actually a plan, <laughs> and then you will uh, register your own domain. And you have like here, like wasimchigam.ngrock.io, for instance. And just use it for, use like this, um, like hard code it somewhere if you want. Okay, so we saw how to design, like really quick, um, a couple of words about how to design a, a persona and uh, a dialogue, and then use Dialogflow to um, write down the, your dialogues, and then use Cloud Function to code or like host your, your, your logic. Now you're ready to like test and distribute your, your application. So for this, you have like, of course, uh, that's for Google Assistant environment. So you have a simulator, like a web simulator, that you can use Like if you don't have a phone, <laughs> who knows, nor like a, a connected speaker. Because by the way, the Google Assistant is available on Android and iOS. So you can, you can use it like to test it on a real device. Um, but the simulator has everything you need to test your app uh, online. For instance, you can here switch between a, uh, a phone, like something that has a screen, like a TV or a phone, or something that only has sound. Because when you are building for this environment, you need to make sure, okay, do I have, do I have a screen? Okay, now I can show like rich responses with images, YouTube videos or whatever. Otherwise, if I, if I only have sound, so I can just like respond with text or, or, or audio. And then when you're ready, you can deploy to production, same command lines, gcloud, that's the official command line tool for, for a GCP, or Firebase, again, if you're using Firebase. And then you're ready like, to send your application to the um, reviewer team at Google, so, because like, it would be reviewed by real humans, you know. Uh, and then they will, they're really friendly because they give you feedback about what's wrong, what's not like fitting the guidelines. Uh, when I submitted mine um, like a, a month ago, I got rejected five times because each time I forgot like to include the privacy policy or for, for instance like um, my app crashed on like specific requests so they will really give you high detailed feedback. And we also, of course, like um, fill in the brand information, the logo, the background, the name of your app, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I have quick demo. So that's the tool, Dialogflow, here. I'm really, let me zoom in. Okay. Have your project here, your intents. So here I have a couple of intents. The one that counts the speaker number is this one, how many speakers are there, blah, blah, blah. And then you say, okay, I will ping a webhook, and in case, I mean, I'll, this is my personal recommendation, because if, like, if your server like, is not responding, you could provide a um, default response, because otherwise your app will just crash 
I mean crash, it will like fail. Um, and here in the fulfillment section, this is where you um, this is where you uh, put the URL, which is in the web hooks, web hook section. But recently, the team added the inline editor, so you can like pro really prototype quickly um, your logic here. So here I have my c the code that obviously computes the number of speakers, but also answers another request, which is uh, who is speaking about animations, for instance. So le let's try this one. Hey, Google, ask Sherry the Viking who is talking about animations. OK, let's get the test version of Sherry from the Angular Viking. I found two speakers who oh. are presenting about animations. Try narrowing your topic to get different results. OK, I will try with like Bluetooth, because I know Yuri, only Yuri talked about Bluetooth. Hey, Google. Talk to Sherry from the Angular Vikings. Sure, here's the test version of Sherry from the Angular Vikings. Hola, I'm Sherry. What can I do for you? Who is talking about Bluetooth? Uri Sheikh is talking about Bluetooth. The title is Reactive Brain Waves. Do you want to hear more about this talk? Yes, please. This talk will start at 1525 on March 2nd. Hear the description that was yesterday. Our brain is a I mean, fascinating morning. machine. Thanks to recent advancements in e technology, we are finally able to begin interfacing with it and build thought control. Just kidding, because I don't have time. It's basically a reading description from the website or the, the Firebase database. Um, so then, um, <clears throat> that's the simulator where you can talk with the same app, like instead of uh, speaking to sure. it. Let's get the test version of Sherry from the Angular Vikings. Sherry, oh, you're, I'm Sherry. you're famous. <laughs> uh, and then, um, okay, I have this gist where I put the logic of my bot uh, with like really no comments, nothing there. So forgive me about that. But it gives you a real, I mean, um, great uh, overview of how things are connected together. Okay, probably I'm late. So, where to start, like, like from tomorrow, next week, if you want to try this at home or at work, um, I really recommend you to read the guidelines from the assistant team. So that basically a checklist of what to do and what to not do. Um, and then, uh, if you're interested in this, the assistant team has start, like launched this program, the community program, where if you build an assistant and then um, publish it and make it available to everyone, you will get for one year, you will get $200 excuse me, per month to like, encourage you to like, build more apps. Uh, and you also will get a t-shirt. Like, not this one, because it's for GDE, but a similar one, let's say. So I really recommend you like trying it out and I swear I, I tested like I deployed my bot and I got uh, the swags. Oh yeah, that's an Angular conference, right? Um, <coughs> sorry about that, guys. So uh, I'm happy to say that the Angular body is already available actually since like many months now. Uh, it have like like 60 active users per month. Um, it's also, I mean, the same logic, the same application is available on the Google Assistant devices, but also on Twitter, because that's possible using Dialflow. I just had to create like a Twitter app, a Twitter account, <laughs> and then link together the API stuff, and it's available on, on there. So it's just Angular, that's the name of the account. Uh, and yeah, because it's Angular, and we love Angular, there's an Angular app. <laughs> which is on this URL, which houses on Firebase. And it's all open source, so you can check out the code. So here you have the Angular app, and here you have the Firebase logic, which is deployed on the cloud. Angular bots on my GitHub account. So currently, the bot does like simple tasks, like for instance, giving you the next uh, event, uh, where the, core, or the Angular team is going to or uh, the current version of Angular, for instance, and uh, a couple of informations about, for instance, I need like an article about animations or about 
RxJS or whatever. I will, so we will grab an NPM or um, ngdocs.io, those informations. Next thing I want to do, for instance, is, uh, okay, but I want to know about animations, and then it will like read the docs or grab some bits from the docu official documentations. And also, who knows, probably like you could scaffold your application with your voice and like, generate component and run the application and like, deploy it with your voice. I mean, you tell me. If you have like any other idea, I would love to hear about, so tweet this at me and we, uh, I mean, let's talk about, about it later. Uh, yeah, so I apparently have a surprise for you guys uh, and folks. <coughs> so, there, there, is, there is a surprise here, so I need to, f like, to find a winner. Um, so what I did is I built a chatbot that will choose randomly with like, a sophisticated algorithm, uh, written in JavaScript, like math random, you know, uh, and like, pick a um, ticket ID, so the ticket you get when you registered for this conference. Want to try it? <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I forget actually the way. <laughs> hey Google, help me find a winner. Okay, you might like talking to Sherry from the Angular Vikings. Does that sound good? Yes. Sherry from the Angular Vikings isn't responding right now. <laughs> try again soon. I have a backup, no worries. But I want to try it again. Hey Google, talk to Sherry the Viking. All right. Getting the test version of Sherry from the Angular Vikings. Hola, I'm Sherry. What can I do for you? Help me find a winner. I missed that. <laughs> Let's raffle. Sorry, I didn't get that. Okay, let me show you the code, actually. Sorry, I can't help. Oh. You know what, because... That's a wrong application, actually. <laughs> hey, Google, talk to Angular Buddy. Sorry, I don't know how to oh, answer that on. yet. I'm going to make it work. Hey, Google, please talk to Angular Buddy. OK, let's get the test version of Angular Buddy. You need to speak nicely with really. your Angular Buddy here. How can I help? Help me find a winner. I hope the person is in the room. The winner is ticket number CHIV-2. So now sh the real Sherry is looking for the name, the person. Uh, uh, can you speak it loud, like the microphone, for instance? Yeah. Hola, <laughs> the real Sherry is here. <laughs> Mihail Nikik. Is it here? Mihail Nikik. No. Another one? Okay, let's travel again. Otherwise, I will just give it to the first person. Ah, it's the same, okay. <laughs> um. Same. Who wants it? <laughs> Oh? Huh? <laughs> so I'm going to give it to Sherry, actually. <laughs> Gracias. So, so just let me like, finish the talk, and then we will discuss about logistics. Uh, so yeah, one more thing, just like last advice. When, you, like, when you're starting with this, uh, this stuff, this, the whole AI or whole chatbot, I just wanna, want you to be really creative and literally think outside the box. Um, I've made this little video which actually, uh, using again the camera, and uh, which then takes a screenshot and extract the text. Yeah, just me. 
Series in if Hemingway wrote JavaScript, author Angus Kroll imagines short JavaScript programs as written by famous okay. wordsmiths. So basically, she's just reading the text, of prose, but um, that's uh, like. For me, that's a really, really interesting use case because you can actually are able to build applications for like people who really need them, um, not just for instance, like finding a winner. <laughs> that's, that would be funny, but uh, like for like people with sight loss, they could really uh, be interested in this kind of application. So uh, please do it, and uh, you can still ping me on Twitter. Like, give me your if you built an app, just share it with me, and I would be happy like to. Um, talk about it. So thank you folks and uh, I'm still looking forward. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Thank you.